if you come to us and you try to attack us, you try to kill us, you try to, you try to do all the horrific things that they did to us on October 7th, we will find you and we will end you. One by one. Wahat min wahat. Well, sheesh, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. Yechia Sinwar and his reign of terror is finally over and done with. Without beating around the bush, let's get right into what's going on. I want to say a huge thank you to all my patrons for supporting here on the channel. Couldn't make any of this content without you. We're stalled off here with Bibi Netanyahu and his reaction to this. One year ago, Yechia Sinwar, the terrorist chief of Hamas, launched the October 7th massacre against Israel. It was the bloodiest attack on the Jewish people since the Holocaust. It was the worst attack on the Jewish state since the founding of Israel. Since war, terrorists murdered in cold blood 1,200 people. That's elderly people, Holocaust survivors, children. They brutally raped women. He also didn't add that a amongst those 1,200 people wasn't just men, women, children. It was also like... Americans, Tanzanians, Nepalese, this was an act of terror against humanity. Not just Israelis, this was against every single nationality that was existing here. Not just Jews, not just Israelis. While Jews were the target, everybody else who was there was a part of it as well. And this includes Palestinians, this includes Arabs. I've spoken about the story of Awad Daraushi many a time on both my channel and on other channels that I have here. And uh, is a story of an Arab Israeli paramedic. He's Palestinian, like every other Palestinian who exists here, and he was brutally murdered by Hamas just for helping people, just for helping save people during the Nova Music Festival. Important, important thing to remember, in my opinion. They beheaded men, they burnt babies alive, and they took some 250 men, 251 women, men, and children, hostage to the dungeons of Gaza. Today. The mastermind of this day of sheer evil is no more. Yicha Sinwar is dead. He was killed in Rafah by the brave soldiers of the Israel Defense Forces. While this is not the end of the war in Gaza, it's the beginning of the end. To the people of Gaza, I have a simple message. This war can end tomorrow. It can end if Hamas lays down its arms and returns our hostages. I was yesterday in a discussion with a friend, <clears throat> a fellow YouTuber, and we were talking about how is the Israeli government going to react to this? Are they going to double down on the war now? Are they going to try to go even heavier in Gaza? Or is this the time to say, wave your white flag and we'll help you rebuild the place? We've accomplished our goal. <clears throat> We've killed the mastermind behind this uh, horrible attack and this mastermind of evil. We've killed the uh, $4 billion millionaire, billionaire that was living in Qatar that was holding you guys like a puppet by the strings. Now, now you have an opportunity. If you're listening, heed the warning, lay down your weapons, return our hostages, surrender. We'll lay you amnesty. We'll give you, we'll give you peace. We'll help you rebuild. Do I have hope in Palestinian society? Not much. Hamas is holding 101 hostages in Gaza who are citizens of 23 countries, citizens of Israel, but citizens of many other countries. Israel is committed to doing everything in our power to bring all of them home. And Israel will guarantee the safety of all those who return our hostages. But to those who would harm our hostages, I have another message. Israel will hunt you down yep. and bring you to justice. That's the right message. I also have a message of hope to the peoples of the region. This may be the most important part of this video, so listen up. The axis of terror that was built by Iran is collapsing before our eyes. Amen. Nasrallah is gone. His deputy Muhsin is gone. Haniyeh is gone. Def is gone. Sinwar is gone. The reign of... And Raisi, killed by a helicopter. Don't forget. ...terror that the Iranian regime has imposed on its own people and on the peoples of Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and Yemen, this too will come to an end. All those who seek a future of prosperity and peace in the Middle East should unite to build a better future. Together, we can push back the forces of darkness and create a future of light and hope for all of us. It's really amazing to think how much the IDF and the Israeli government has changed here in the Middle East in just one year. I mean, we've had very, very bleak, a very bleak outlook on a lot of what's going on in the Middle East for the last year. It's been it's been hard to find hope in a lot of moments. It's been it's been hard to see the end goal. 
But when something like this happens, and and you, and you look at the cumulative success of all of this, Khomeini, Khomeini is hiding in a tunnel somewhere in Iran, probably scared shitless that the Israeli government is going to pop him at any point, that the Mossad or the Shabak are going to come and get him. Um, that maybe they'll even get him with the with the treacherous dolphins, which you can look at that. Come on, travelingclad.com. Get yourself merch and support the channel. You can get your combat dolphin shirts. You know, the ones that Hamas are so afraid of? Go support the channel by getting some merch. Um, you know, it's it's amazing to see how much has changed. And when you look at it as a cumulative success, it's, uh, it's really amazing. And the fact, in my opinion, and we'll get into this in a little bit, the fact that most of these recent successes have been found in Rafa, Rafiach, the place that the international community, even the American government, told us to not enter. Uh, people like uh, Kamala Harris, for example, cooperating that epic failure on her end of telling us to not enter this place. Now, Kamala Harris, uh, this is a future presidential hopeful in America, keeps flip-flopping on every... I mean, she doesn't just flip-flop on American politics, she flip-flops on Israel politics as well. And this is why I think like people like her do not need to be involved in the Middle East politics. She doesn't understand it. But here's what she said after the killing of Yechia Sinwar. Today, Israel confirmed that Yahya Sinwar, the leader of Hamas, is dead. And justice has been served. And the United States, Israel, and the entire world are better off as a result. Sinwar was responsible for the killing of thousands of innocent people, including the victims of October 7, and hostages killed in Gaza. He had American blood on his hands. Today, I can only hope that the families of the victims of Hamas feel a sense and measure of relief. Not thanks to you, Kamala. You were the ones, you were the one to specifically say to not go into Rafah. You said it would be a humanitarian crisis. You said avoid entering Rafah. It's not just, it's not moral. But here we are. Six of our hostages were murdered in cold blood in a tunnel. And apparently from the news, and we'll get into this a little bit later, but the news was that Yechi Sinwar was surrounded by these hostages. Once the IDF was closing in on them, he executed them and then ran away to a different place in hiding. But specifically the place you were telling us to not go into was the place where all of this went down. And it's actually a pretty epic operation because most of this happened by accident. There's nothing more beautiful than that. We'll get into also more more of the sort of religious elements of this in a second. But it's just something to point out. Kamala, uh, I'm an American citizen. I'm also an Israeli citizen. You have failed me on a personal level. Yehi Sinwar is a person who came in and put my life, my cousins, my grandma, every single person in my family in mortal danger for for over a year now and for many years before that i will not i will not be able to look at you the same way if there was an opportunity to end this man's life and you delayed it i will never i will never ever ever be able to forgive you for that and for those hostages that were probably killed i i consider their blood at least partly on your hands and that's the honest truth this moment gives us an opportunity to finally end the war in Gaza. And it must end on our terms, our terms, such that Israel is secure. That's right. The hostages are released. True. The suffering in Gaza ends. Hopefully. And the Palestinian people can realize their right to dignity, security, freedom, and self-determination. I'll agree with everything besides the self-determination bit. Let's be honest, okay? When when Khomeini, or sorry, when uh, Ismail Haniyeh was murdered, okay, when he was killed by the Mossad Shabak IDF, there were celebrations all across the streets of the Middle East, Syria, Iraq, Iran, uh, here in Israel, not in Palestine. When Muhammad Def was killed, celebrations everywhere, not in Palestine. Nasrallah, one of the biggest terrorists of the modern age, killed there were celebrations all over the middle east not in palestine and today when yechia sinwar is finally ended there are celebrations everywhere 
but not in Palestine. Now, I beg you to look at the evidence. Palestinians have a long time track record of botching any opportunity to help themselves. I don't think America should be propagating the idea of Palestinian self-determination. Good quality of life, yes. Um, liberty, yes. Uh, 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 um, you know, healthcare, civil rights, whatever we can give them to give them. Absolutely, I love Palestinians with my entire heart. I will always, always say that. But self-determination needs to be thrown off the table. No self-determination to Palestinians. No two-state solution. I don't want to live near a Palestinian state. Nobody wants to live near a Palestinian state. Most Palestinians don't want to live in or around a Palestinian state. Go ask how many Palestinians that live here if they want to move to Jordan. That is the Palestinian state. Ask, ask them how many of them want to move to Jordan. They'll all say no. None of us in this region want a Palestinian state. It will end in corruption, it will end in fascism, it will end in Arab supremacy and Islamo-fascist uh, racist ideology. Nobody wants it. We don't want it. Don't force it on us. You don't live here. You don't have to deal with those consequences, Kamala. We don't want it. Stop propagating this ideology. No two-state solution. And it is time for the day after to begin. And then I'll send uh, of so I agree. It is it is time for the day after. We're in the day after now, and um, let's look at one more video here. Uh, this is from Hagari, the spokesperson of the IDF. Most brutal attack against Israel in our history. When terrorists from Gaza invaded Israel, massacred Israelis in their homes, raped our women, burned entire families alive, and took over 250 men, women, children, and babies hostage into Gaza. 101 hostages still remain in captivity in brutal conditions. For the past year, Sinwar tried to escape justice. He failed. He did fail. Big time he failed. We said we would find him and bring him to justice. And we did it. It was Yaya Sinwar who decided to wage war with Israel while hiding behind civilians in Gaza. Since the beginning of this war, that Sinwar started on October 7th, we've said our war is with Hamas, not with the people of Gaza. And we mean it. I, I mean, I know, I know that this is the message that Israel sends. And I, obviously, I agree with it. Our war is not on the people of Gaza. But we do have to. I know, obviously, he can't at a state level. It wouldn't be smart to even say something like this. But I want you guys to acknowledge I'm, I'm not, I don't work for the government. I work here as sort of like an independent journalist. I'm working here on the ground. I'm talking to people every single day. I'm making content about this situation. You have to remember that Gazans and Arabs as a whole around the world overwhelmingly support the atrocities of October 7th and overwhelmingly support uh, Hamas. They do. They overwhelmingly support this ideology. It's something that's really, really important to remember and to not infantilize these people or remove that from the equation. The Palestinian public, Palestinian society is a danger to itself and to everybody around them. They need societal reform. And I think that rhetoric like this, our war is not with the Palestinian people, I think maybe it could be fixated more with an iron fist to say, our war is with anybody in Palestine or anybody in Gaza who corroborates what Hamas wants. And if that's a majority of the Palestinian people, then we're at war with you. It, it, I mean, Obviously, I know it's not... PC and a government spokesperson can't really come on stage and say that, but I'll say it for him. You have to remember that if 80% of the Gazan population supports Hamas, we are still in actual danger. Just because Sinwar is gone, it doesn't mean everything becomes all safe now. Yes, we're giving them an opportunity to lay down their arms, but are they going to take it? I bet not. I hope yes, but I bet not, unfortunately. They have a bad track record with these kinds of things. Working to increase the amount of humanitarian aid, including food, water, and medicine that goes into Gaza to the people of Gaza who are suffering because of Yahya Sinwar. On this day, our thoughts are with the families of those murdered or kidnapped because of Sinwar. We bow our, our hearts, heads, and remember, we bow our heads 
and remember our brave soldiers who paid their ultimate sacrifice to defend the people of Israel. Yep. Our work is not done. We will not rest until we bring home all our hostages. Amen. By any means. And we will continue to operate until we complete all our missions in defense of the people of Israel. So, now that we've gone through the reaction uh, by at least the Israeli spokespeople, we'll talk about the operation itself, and then we'll talk about the reaction by some parts of the world and some analysis on this situation. This might be a longer video because this is a big day. This has been like the number one target of Israel since this war kicked off. Um, if you guys don't know, there's some beautiful irony in uh, the situation with Yechia Sinwar. Israel, at a certain point in time, had saved Yechia Sinwar's life. He was suffering from a brain tumor. He went under surgery while he was in jail in Israel. They saved his life. They fixed his brain tumor and released him during the uh, prisoner exchange with Gilad Shalit. This was about 10 years ago. Since then, he went on to plan this October 7th massacre after Israel saved his life. I might be talking, I'm going to try to talk in a little bit of a lingo to uh, not get myself demonetized, but we are going to be looking at um, some footage here of what actually went down. Now, it's going to be in a small screen, so it's a little obscure, so if you want to look away, it, it, there's nothing uh, obscenely graphic here at all. You're just going to see some destruction and the way that this went down. Here is Yechia Sinwar's last moments. So apparently the story goes, this will play in a loop so you guys can just listen to my voice. If you can see him right here in the bottom corner, covered in dust, his arm is injured and he's wearing a uh, sort of a, a face covering, hiding his face. He was basically surrounded by five different personnel security guards or four different personnel security guards when the IDF closed in on this building. It was not a planned uh, operation on Yechia Sinwar. They did not know he was here, which is even more amazing that all this went down by accident. Uh, about three days ago, they were able to clear these first four uh, cronies that were hanging around him, his uh, his goons, let's say, and he was the last one left uh, left alive. As you can see here, he just tossed a stick because this was what was left of him, him injured on a chair, on a table, um, holding a stick in his arm to defend himself from an IDF drone. <laughs> listen, listen, people will tell you Jewish people and people should not be celebrating something like this. I absolutely could not agree less uh we should be celebrating you know this person put the lives of millions upon millions upon millions of people in danger he pretty much started a regional war in the middle east that we have to now end we should be celebrating the the end of this person so you can see the stick that he's holding there that's what he's using to try to defend himself from the idf drone and he tosses it at the drone like the loser that he is and the drone swerves out of his way you can see here, there he is, he's getting ready to toss his stupid little thing. And the drone swerves out of the way. And there he is, sitting there, left sitting there like, ooh, what's coming? So basically, they, they the recordings from these IDF soldiers came out saying that he was throwing rocks, he was throwing sticks at them. They came in, they launched an explosive and ended him. They didn't come back to check this building till a day later. So it was only yesterday in the afternoon that the forensics started getting done. They checked his teeth. They checked, uh, you know, they were face matching. They sent blood samples. And within about an hour from when the news and the rumors started coming out, it was confirmed that he it was indeed Yechia Sinwar who was taken out in this operation alongside a bunch of his bodyguards. He was holding $10,000 with him and an UNRWA ID which is obviously not surprising. Muhammad Def's wife was an UNRWA teacher. UNRWA is completely embedded with Hamas and Palestinian terrorists. Um, there's no surprise there at all. The same way that Unifil, the video that we just made, is completely embedded with Hezbollah terrorists. Every aspect and every facet of the UN is embedded with Iranian Islamic regime terrorists, and they need to be ended. Absolutely. Um, so this is this is the react or this is the actual footage of the operation. Look, I'll never be one to say you should look at graphic imagery if it doesn't suit you, but, 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 but. Everybody in Israel is looking today. The whole picture is of everything. You can see from start to finish, not just the operation, and I'm sure that more footage and more details are going to come out. You can see what he looked like when it was over. And I think it's an important, I'm going to monologue here for a second, but bear with me. I don't think that it's important to glorify death or things like this. I don't think it's important for every person to see. 
But I think if you're mature enough and you can handle looking at him in the state he was after the IDF was finished with him, I think it's important and I'll tell you why. This sends a message. It says a precedent to the wider Arab world and to the wider jihadi world and to the wider Muslim world and those who continuously and have been threatening the lives of Jewish people for the last thousand years. Don't forget that October 7th, I agree with the Palestinians. It didn't start October 7th. This has been a legacy of abuse by Muslim supremacists, Arab supremacists on the Jewish people and every single ethnic minority under them for the last thousand years. Do, look, they're leaving thumbs up. Meta gave me a little thumbs up. <laughs> Do not forget the images you see of Yechia Sinwar's face. May they be ingrained in your memory forever and in the memory of your descendants and your descendants' descendants. If you come with us, if you come to us and you try to attack us, you try to kill us, you try to, you try to do all the horrific things that they did to us on October 7th, we will find you and we will end you one by one. Wahat min wahat. We will get you every single time. And yes, you might do a lot of damage to us along the way. You might hurt our ego. You might traumatize us. Absolutely. You've done, you've done, you've done a great job at that for the last thousand years. But we will get you one by one. Wahat min wahat. There is no remorse. There is no mercy. And I hope, I hope, I hope that Israel and Jewish society as a whole changes from this event. We're living through our modern day Hitler moment. We have a story in Purim of Haman, the man in the Persian Empire who tried to kill all the Jews. He was the, he was the Hitler before Hitler. And Yechia Sinwar is as close to that as we can get in the modern day. No mercy, no remorse. With a smile on our face, we will get you one by one. Wahat min wahat. I'm Israel Chai. Let's get into a little bit of the reactions from these crazy jihadis. So you have Mariam Barghouti, one of the uh, Palestinian terrorist uh, apologizers. Born October 29th, freed from detention October 18th. Al-Aqsa flood, you mean the October 7th massacre, martyred October 17th. She writes in her caption, If Yahya Sinwar was not a hero before, Israel just made sure his legacy becomes immortalized. Where Israel tries to quell resistance, it only empowers it and proves its necessity. The only way to end Palestinian resistance is to end reasons for having it. This man was a... This guy was a... This guy was a sadistic murderer. This guy was an awful human being. But again, like I said earlier, I don't have much hope in Palestinian society because they will. They will glorify his death. They will celebrate him. They will celebrate his life. For all the horrible things that he did. You can see now they're having this whole attack between the two of them. Let the resistance confirm the news. Um, Yechia Sinwar never left his people. He did. He hid in tunnels underneath them. He was there on the front lines. Not true. Sharing in their struggle and their pain. Standing with Gaza until they had. No, he surrounded himself with hostages and hid underground like a little rat. Uh, he's a hero. Ideas are immortal. October babies of Palestine. Again, I don't have much hope in Palestinian society because I know I know that they're not celebrating today. Nobody's celebrating the death of him. Nobody's happy that he's gone there. People are going to be mourning in the streets. They're going to be sad that he's gone because he actually probably was. In Arabic, Yaya means to live on. Yaya, October. So this is just a little outlook from uh, the Palestinian side. There's obviously much more of this. I made a video on it sort of poking fun, and you saw the degradation of the, Palesti the pro-Palestinian brain cells. Um, now, this is from my friends at Diploact. They made a pretty interesting post as well. On Simchat Torah 2023, which is the... Simchat Torah is the celebration of us finishing to read the Torah and beginning the cycle again in the Jewish year. The holiday that closes out Sukkot. Uh, which is the holiday that we're currently in, the holiday that this happened in. So Sukkot was yesterday and the day before it, the first night and the second night. On the sec on the first night, this happened. On the second night, we got the news. On the last night of Sukkot, a year ago, is when Yechia Sinwar carried out October 7th. So it says, the holiday that closes out Sukkot, Yechia Sinwar executed the most brutal attack in Israeli history. That was October 7th. On the first day of Sukkot, 2024, he was eliminated. Now, let's talk for a second about what this means, okay, on more of a religious aspect. Now, whether you're Jewish or not watching this, it's just important to remember, you you fuck with the Jews, <laughs> and God's got an interesting way to show you the truth. 
you know, we can try to separate the holiness of what's going on. We can try to separate God from the equation. And if you want to look at purely at a, you know, at a, a rational, logical, non-godly level, that's totally kosher. That's totally halal. I won't blame you for it. I'll say, okay, you know, if you're not a God-fearing person, you don't believe in God, I will never ask you to adjust your worldview to believe in this stuff. By all means, you can just connect these as coincidences. But it is damn hard to separate that. Yechia Sinwar was evading us for a year. If there was any time that his that he could have been eliminated, it is damn ironic that it happens on the first day of the holiday where he started this mess. We had a year, we had a year of mourning, of death, of pain, of tragedy, of the hostages, of, of, of so much trauma. One full year. And we look back a year later. Khomeini is still at the top, but he's hiding in a tunnel. But a year later, our enemies are gone. They're not here anymore. What's left of them is a, a pool of nothingness. They failed. They failed to take down Am Yisrael. They failed to accomplish their goals. All they did was terrorize our people and terrorize their own people. They unfortunately are looking way worse for wear than we ever will. And that's something to remember. I think there is something very holy behind that. Especially when you look at how these things lined up. Chronologically and where we stand today. We got everybody around him, everyone in between. But the man himself who started this thing, the rat himself, was taken out on the exact holiday where he started it. Very, very beautiful. Now, there is a conspiracy going online. I'm seeing in my YouTube comment sections about me. If you guys have not watched it, I highly recommend you watch the video I made called The Roast of Hezbollah. It's one of the vid best videos I've ever produced on YouTube, on anywhere. It took me seven hours to edit. I'm not going to show you guys the full video here, but it is a roast. And we're back with The Roast of Hezbollah. So I hear now Hezbollah wants a ceasefire, eh? It seems that 5,000 men losing their dicks in one afternoon can convince even Allah that the resistance needs a little wakey wakey every once in a while from those evil Jews. And you know, Hezbollah keeps saying. Okay, I'm just gonna give you a little sneak peek. I highly recommend you guys check it out. It's starting to blow up. This thing has almost 100,000 views on Instagram. It's moving here on YouTube. We're getting close to 10K. So if you guys wanna laugh a little bit about the situation, it's good. I made this the day of Sukkot or the day before Sukkot. And now people are saying there's a conspiracy theory that I had insider information. And this is why. At the end of the video, I made a joke. All right. I, and I wrote this like I, I wrote this almost a week ago. Um, After we've killed all their leaders and all the replacements to their leaders and all the replacements to the replacements. Hello? He's what? Oh, shit. We'll be right back with the roast. Kind of crazy. Now, to give you guys context, this joke was originally written. If you didn't understand what happens, I'm in the middle of telling a joke at the end, and then I get a call on my beeper, and I check my phone, and I'm like, hello? We And somebody tells me in the phone, we got him. He's dead. And I go, he's what? And I look at the camera, and I go, oh, shit. This joke was originally written about Hassan Nasrallah because it was supposed to be like a post Hassan Nasrallah situation. And what was supposed to be is it was supposed to look at Hassan Nasrallah. I was supposed to pan the camera and Nasrallah was supposed to be sort of like dead in his chair or like sleeping in his chair. And uh, what I ended up, I ended up reformatting it to be more ambiguous because I was like, this could work for whenever we take out somebody the next time. Who would have thought that less than 24 hours later, Yechia Sinwar would be taken out? That is crazy. So now people are telling me that I had insider information and that there's a conspiracy theorist that they're like, there's no way. Let's look at the comments here. I'll show you guys. It's pretty funny. There's like, there's no way this guy didn't have insider information about this. Yeah. Somebody was saying they're like, there, yeah, there you go. <laughs> there's no way you did not have either inside knowledge or a psychic insight on Sinwar's death. I heard it's the last gig Sinwar watched. Now a Sin Sinwar is dead. I guess that was the phone call. Oh man, <laughs> this this aged like a fine wine. Holy shit! You made this yesterday, and today they got Sinwar. Amazing. Yechi Sinwar's last appearance by Sinwar, seventeenth October, twenty twenty four. I I honestly didn't. I honestly could say with confidence I did not. I 
it was a total fluke, but I'm proud that I made it. So maybe considering making a, a roast of Hamas video. Tell me if you guys want me to. I might do it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're in a new age. We're in a new day. Um, thank you guys so much for the success on the last video like this. We're going to make another one in the future. Please support the channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. I love you a long time. Goodbye, Clats. If you believe in my content and want to support me, just know your help is needed. There's a bunch of great ways to monetarily support the channel. Some of the best ways to support me happen to be PayPal, buy me a coffee, or joining our Patreon community. Links to them can be found in the pinned comments or the description of every one of my videos. Joining my Patreon community gives you access to exclusive content and the chance to talk to me on our Discord server. I also go live almost every day here on YouTube. And after my live streams, me and my patrons from Patreon head over to our Discord server to an exclusive after-party hangout. Your support is the only way that I can keep creating the content that you love watching for me. Thank you.